everybody and welcome back to Time to Go. Bob here and today we're going to be taking a look at a watch from the Seiko Tuna line of watches. I've had my eye on these for a while and I wasn't really crazy about them but just like the, what happened with me with the Monster I kind of have grown on the whole look over time after looking at different YouTube videos reading articles on them. So I went on the hunt last weekend uh, just locally here in Toronto. There's a lot available on the pre-owned market. I ended up discovering this one. This is the Seiko SRP 655. This is their 50th anniversary diver watch and uh, picked that one up and it's a beast of a watch. A little later on in the weekend, a couple of days later, I found available a SRP 657. This is a little bit more conserv conservative size wise and just style uh, stylistically as well. So I got that one too. So today we're going to be looking at the 655. I'll probably do a full video on the SRP 637 at a later point in time. But for now, let's spin the camera around. We'll take a closer look at the watch. The SRP 655 here was a special edition watch. This was released in 2015 along with a blue version, the SRP 653, to mark 50 years of Seiko dive watches. As far as packaging goes, the box is a little bit different than the usual Prospects line. It's a little bit larger as well. We have the markings here for Seiko Divers Watch 50th Anniversary. The rest of the stuff that comes with the watch is just your typical instruction manual, warranty information, and hang tag. So this watch is definitely on the larger side, especially if we compare it to the SRP637. I believe there's about a four and a half millimeter difference in case width on these. So let me just throw a few specifications and measurements at you on the 655. First of all, the case width here comes in at a pretty massive 51.5 millimeters. The lug width is 22 millimeters. We have a case uh, thickness that ranges from just over 13 millimeters all the way up to 17 and a half millimeters at its thickest point. Although this watch does wear closer to a 13 millimeter thickness, just the way we have this deep curvature on the uh, bottom of the case. The water resistance on this watch is 200 meters. We have a hard lex crystal and it's housing the hacking and hand winding 4R36 movement. The case here is essentially made from two pieces. If we flip it on its side here, you'll see the main part of the case. It is stainless steel with the upper shroud here being black ceramic. It is screwed to the case with these four screws. And it's really this shroud that gives this watch its unique look. The uh, case and shroud are cut out here around the crown, kind of giving it an integrated crown guard. And the case itself has a pretty dramatic curve here and it's also hollowed out on the case back which makes it sit really securely on the wrist for such a large watch and I should also mention the lugs they don't extend from the case which makes this watch wear a little smaller than it would have otherwise on the case back we have the typical tsunami wave logo as well as some other information and numbers on this particular watch the dial here is a glossy black with the day date function at three o'clock. The handset, which is common to a few different Seiko divers I've had, has the large arrowhead hour marker, the sword minute hand, and the red second hand, which matches the outline of the hour markers. We have a raised chapter ring with little cutouts at the hour markers, giving the dial some nice depth and dimension. Um, the hour markers, was, as well as the hands and the pip here on the bezel are all loomed so let's hit the lights and check that out for a second and no big surprise here Seiko is very famous when it comes to their to their divers for their loom and this one does not disappoint it is very bright and it stays very bright for quite a long time the bezel here is a 120 click unidirectional bezel I have to say it is a little bit hard to grip I think it's just a little bit thinner than say the monster bezel there's not as much to grab a hold of um, there's next to no play in the bezel and as far as any alignment issues that some Seikos have this one is pretty much bang on as you can see here the last thing that I'd like to talk about before we take a look at it on wrist is the strap. And this strap is far and away the best quality rubber strap I've ever seen from Seiko. 
The rubber is just really soft and pliable. It has a quality feel. The buckle and keeper here, you'll see they are very heavy duty sign Seiko. We also have a second rubber keeper here. And on the other end of the strap, we also have, I'm not sure if you can make it out there, the Tsunami Wave logo again. So let's pop it on wrist here for a quick sec. All right, now, although this is a pretty huge and heavy watch. It really doesn't feel that way on wrist. Just the way the case conforms to your wrist as well as that quality rubber strap. It's quite comfortable. With just the sheer size of this thing though, I have to admit it's a little outside my comfort zone. It's a great watch, but after putting it side by side with the SRP 637, I think the 637 suits me a little better. To sum this watch up, I'd have to say it is a really great watch, but it's also a really great big watch as well. So that's going to be it, guys. Let's spin the camera around and we'll wrap up today's video. All right, guys, so appreciate you stopping by the channel. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I do have quite a few watches in the queue for review, so make sure you stay tuned to the channel and I'll be having lots more content coming out very soon. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.